people of color have to deal with racial microaggressions every single day. So microaggressions are those little unintentional insults that basically see people of color as stereotypes. Which got me thinking, what if white people had to deal with racial microaggressions? So like, where are you from? No, no, like, where are you really from? Why do you have an accent? Like a, like a Swedish accent. You know, your English is really, really good. It's like I can't even tell you have an accent or anything. I don't have an accent. No, that's what I'm saying. You don't speak Gaelic? You don't speak German? Can you say a curse word in European? You know, like, what does that even mean? <laughs> hey, Connor, um, you know about NASCAR stuff, right? Um, can you take a look at this? Can you teach me how to line dance? Play the banjo? Act entitled in the supermarket. I love white food. No real flavor to it. Never an upset tummy. You're so exotic. How do you get your hair like that? I love how it's so limp. Ew, why does it feel like that? Oh my god, so it just does that? No, you are really pretty for a white girl. Your eyes are so round. The first thing I want to talk about is the hashtag all lives matter. Please don't use it. That hashtag was made to derail the Black Lives Matter movement. I've just had enough of this because there was a time, like not too long ago, where con I was scrolling through Twitter and every single day, a black person was shot, a black person was shot, a black person was shot. It's tiring to hear that people do this kind of shit. How can you not expect people to think that it's racism? People keep saying it's not about race, it's not about race. But it is, how, how are you so blind to that? Everyone says that, oh, you're thinking it way too deep. It's really not that deep. Everything is. And you're just too oblivious to notice it. Literally everything is about race nowadays. And it shouldn't be, but uh-oh, it is. And that's what Black Lives Matter is trying to do. They're trying to fight for their rights to be heard. And all lives matter just wipes it away. You can see that I'm getting so angry, but I'm not even black. Imagine how angry black people are. They've been facing this kind of shit since like the start of time. I am 17. 22. 18. I'm 15 and I live in Dallas, Texas. I think people in my generation are less tolerant to blatant racism. Kids nowadays tend to grow up thinking that the problems in the past. I don't see color. It feels bad to know that I am better off because I was born this way. I would be in jail if if I wasn't white. I would be in jail if if I wasn't white. So I've been thinking a lot about dudes lately. And not in a fun way. Not in a man hating way either. Just you know, thinking about male allies in particular. Male feminists, if you will. And I feel like I got a lot to say. Let's start here. I love me some allies. Some of you call yourselves feminists and then do some really sexist, misogynist things. Some of you talk a really good talk, but when it comes to applying feminist values to your everyday lives, really don't walk the walk too well. And, and I'm just confused. So, I wanted to give you a few reminders, just a few, on how to be a good ally. So, dear feminist men, you have a duty to amplify the voices of women. That means you should share our work. It means you should reference our resources. It means that if you get called to be on a panel, you need to ask whether or not there's a woman on that panel too. Yeah, even if the panel is on masculinity. Because just like you can talk about feminism, we can talk about manhood. Let's talk about sex. Remember how I was saying that you can't just shut off your socialization? That also applies in sex. Like, I have actually seen so-called feminist guys get women to sleep with them just by virtue of being feminist guys. That's fucked up. Don't use feminism to get laid. That's not what it's here for. <laughs> Growing up, I was always told that there are boys and there are girls and that's it. And I think there was a point in my life when I realized, oh, that's not actually true. There are people all over this wonderful spectrum of gender. And that's what being genderqueer is all about, I think. Sometimes people think that this whole community support thing is really difficult. Like, 
How do I support people best and embrace their identity? Kanye, it starts with shoes. When someone's trying to embrace their gender for the first time and their femininity, maybe they just need to borrow a pair of heels, you know? When one of your friends is trying to experiment with masculinity and needs to borrow a bow tie but doesn't have a bow tie yet, help them learn how to tie a bow tie and give them your bow tie. That kind of stuff is so important. My name is Brooke Abraha. I'm a senior at LREI, and I am a feminist. <laughs> Gay! I would encourage a friend or peer in joining the feminist movement because, uh, it, once again, it really does embody more than just uh, equal rights for women or it embodies more than just uh, benefiting only women. It can help us all.